I'm an accidental speaker. I never intended to be a speaker. There are some people who are writers who become speakers, and there are some people who are speakers who become writers. I definitely fall into category one. In fact, when I first started to get invitations to speak, I thought, what are you people doing? Do you want me to stand at the front and read a book? Like, what am I supposed to do? But they said, no, 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 we just want to talk to you. We want to hear your stories. So, you know, I got up at the front of the room and talked a little bit about why I wrote my book and what I was hearing back from other parents. And it was sort of like a natural conversation. I love to speak about topics where I can bare my soul without being too icky about it. Um, I like to tell people that you're not alone. Whatever it is you're struggling with, somebody else is struggling alongside you. As somebody who's struggled with depression and who's had children with special needs, who's experienced stillbirth, I've walked a lot of difficult paths. And there were times when I felt so alone. And that's the worst of it. You can deal with anything once you know what it is and once you have a friend by your side. When I came home from the hospital that night, after having been induced and after having to give birth to our poor little baby who we, did, who we buried as a family, you can imagine how painful that was. And so I opened up my copy of a best-selling pregnancy book and I said, you know, okay, what wisdom will there be there for me? And I really wanted to know that I was not alone. That was the big thing for me because when you go through a tragedy, you want to know I am not alone. And the book said, don't worry, this is extremely rare. It probably won't happen to you. And it is not extremely rare. It happens in one out of 160 pregnancies, which makes it twice as common as SIDS. And I felt horribly misled. I felt like a freak of nature. And I never wanted another mother to feel that way again. For a long time, I read tons of material about parenting. And then I thought a lot about what's wrong with our world. And it's only been in the past few years that I've sort of connected the two spheres of, you know, geez, there's a lot of things in this world that need to be fixed. And, you know, these things seem to work to make kids healthier and happier and that kind of thing. And then I thought, what if I could combine these things in my life? What if I could talk to parents about the ways that we could work on our children and work on our families and create healthier communities and work for a better world? So you're probably wondering about this little treasure box I brought with me today. It is full of goodies that represent the fights that parents have after they have a baby. People tell me that I manage to combine a lot of humor and information and calls to action, which I don't really think about it consciously when I'm writing the presentation, but I do like to tell stories, I do like to try to inspire people, and I love to share information. So somehow it comes together rather organically. I really think it's important that people share stories and I really think it's important to keep it simple so that people go home with a couple of ideas of things they can apply to their life and carry that forward. Because if you're gonna take an hour out of your day to come to one of my presentations, I feel like I owe it to you to make that hour really count. So I'm gonna keep it lively, I'm gonna keep it interactive, I'm gonna give you at least a couple of my infamous bad jokes and I'm going to tell you something that's going to make you think a different way about parenting and that's why I'd like it if you'd come out to one of my presentations. Besides, we'll have fun.